Language and food are intimately intertwined, as the mouth plays an important role in both. The mouth serves as an important expression for language, as well as a means of receipt and taste for this incredible food. When we recall a favorite childhood meal or cuisine, like amakrimbi, all we have to do is utter the term and you can almost taste it. Because of this incapacity to adequately express the wonder and pleasure of food, meanings and tastes can be lost when food is translated between languages and cultures. My name is Principal Omashang. Welcome to Makriza Made Me Cook. So, something that I want to talk about today uh, is very close to my heart and something that I think you've seen with also the show. If it's your first time, please just go uh, to the older videos. You've seen that when we, if a guest talks about, let's say, indigenous type of food, uh, for example, you'd realize that we'll write his trailer then. We also offer the other local uh, names. Uh, if it's Chwala, we'll say Sadza, we'll say Hadza, we'll say Shadza. Um, there's a reason why we, we did that. Uh, it's based on the importance of food, um, or the importance of language within food, and how the preservation of these languages is very important. And also, not kindly, when we do also within the culinary experience, it is important for us also to conserve our languages within the element uh, of food. The link between language and culture, basically I think to start with the language comes from culture, it's a part of culture. It's one of the many facets that make up culture like fishing, like our practices and stuff like that. You know, when, so it, really to discuss the link Culture, yeah, we should deal without language. Language is very important. It's influence. It's a, on, on Abandu, on, you know, language is a means of communication, first and foremost, and a means of record. So you record your culture, you record your heritage using language. You know, like you look at how, uh, like how language, words change. It's slang, you know, where, over time, it's a record. So you can tell the history or the time by the way, Duma Zumundu, a seven a particular word, just ah, lazy cookie, I wanna kind of thing. So that's part and parcel of a cultural practice. Yeah, but the language really is part of I heard some of we humans cannot not communicate. And that's the very basis of communication. I'm a bala at Karatehile because in Lila, S is expressing I as a bantu, and sometimes I'm a yama bala. I had describe her is in do, more go by is was. Yeah, for example, I'm a twimpy. If you say I'm a twimpy, we are going to allow you something, which is a girl and Jani or a test and Jan. Yeah, I love one go away. And stuff like that. So I, I think good character is what he. Oh, good language. Question two. Good language. Good language. You know, leo. Oh, good language. Oh, yo, yo. And abantu va va found even people from other countries or other cultures. Was joy is the oh founder is in the end. Leo as he is. The end. Leo that is founder as for example is kill. Words carry meaning. Uh, words explain things, words basically culture, our culture lies in words. So if you look at the word amakumi, on its own it's a, it's a dish. So now it will tell you what you eat, dish, yabobani, I want to listen to Billy and Atolagala and how you prepare them and all of that. So words make up sentences, sentences which make up our culture, everyday life. It explains and brings understanding uh, to a certain people. And also, it carries our history and our values and traditions as people. So that is the importance of words and what they mean to me. So we just want to look at why we sort of like stopped uh, naming uh, the more pani worms or also other types of food. Just dig into the indigenous names. So the first uh, reason is that sometimes when we translate these from the indigenous to English, we might sometimes lose the meaning, uh, the context also within that translation. 
And as mentioned also in the introduction, when you look at a name and if you say Amak uh, to me personally, there's a nostalgic feeling when I, I, I also look at Amak in that way, in terms of that name within Isin uh, If you say Mopanwems, there's a different um, thing that comes to, to my mind. But when you, I take it from uh, Amak uh, there is this feeling that comes and I can actually taste the food uh, in, my, in my mouth. To preserve local languages, there are many ways to do that and one of them is through book publishing. So we create books that will preserve our culture. Many years from now, we still should be able to access these books. To say, if I create a book, Eli Kuluma about Amatunbi today, someone uh, 10 years from now should be able to access that book and read and understand uh, what it means or whatever I was saying in that book. So in terms of language now, uh, bringing in the language aspect, there's a challenge of e e the way audience uh, understand or read or they prefer to consume information. So now, if I'm to write a book, I have to consider the wider audience, which is not everyone is in the value or everyone can understand and read this in the value. So that's where the challenge is that you end up using English as your form of uh, method of communication. But I think to beat that challenge, you can still call um, whatever word you want to use for what it is. So if I'm writing on Amakwimbi, I'll call them Amakwimbi, even if I'm writing in English. So then that brings in the other aspects of book, book publishing to provide pictures. If I'm talking about Amakwimbi, I should provide a picture that should depict Amakwimbi and show the reader who tell you Amakwimbi. I don't have to call them or panel worms to accommodate them. Yeah. And I also think Uwuti Gumele, I'm a African cuisines or traditional food. Since joy is a ugu gula as in clean. So we introduce it from a home setup before we go outside. And then go my restaurants eat. Go ten years. Go introduce it. my menus as it is. Then because umunda I wanna evala la zio. I would like to try something out something as a one. So yeah, I think that would also work in preserving the language here too. Oh yeah, lo witi footy ama cookbooks. I've seen gulama African cookbooks uh a genius how to cook the African meals. They can also include Uguja Kona Loko as verifying the language here too. I think that would also help. I thought it was fitting for us to do this story today just to explain uh, the reasons behind the utilization of these African indigenous names. Uh, remembering clearly also that a language is an important um, field within culture and we as a cultural show, uh, I Love Culture is the use of these languages. Uh, I was really inspired uh, by the work done by famous uh, scholar Ungu uh, Gwathio. Those who know here in Zimbabwe, we actually the Olive literature was, and the African literature was so much uh, reading Ungugi. So Ungugi is a big fan of decolonization and what he says uh, at a public lecture that he gave in South Africa, I think uh, 2013 uh, if I'm not wrong, is where he said language is the most important tool that can be used for decolonization. And that language carries a people's history, uh, a language carries uh, a people's culture uh, and us using language. And when we now neglect the use of these indigenous language, actually neglecting uh, ourselves. I want to Africans a lot to get Having gone through slavery, through colonization, and, and today we live in an age where like all our languages are diluted. Yes, culture is always going to evolve, which means languages are going to evolve. So when it's like because of what you right now, see Kuduma, but there's English in our what what what. So Gunzima for the urban and developed person or the urban African to from start to finish Kulmelawa in my indigenous language. I'm probably going to mix five, six languages. It's a beauty of its own in itself. But you could like because 
we lose our essence, our core. We have one of the very things that makes us. For me to understand what it means to be in development, when I do not understand where the particular mode of communication is coming from, how these words were devised and derived, and how did I get to today? See, I want to one said thing I learned one time with it. If a little bruko, he puluko. It's not even in devil way. It comes from the Dutch. With <laughs> mahala, upatala, mzala. So, which means it's in devil. It doesn't exist anymore in its pure essence. Okay, so I know this might take uh, long for us to discuss this topic of, of language, but I think with time also we would maybe do another video in detail on how we can preserve local indigenous language. But what we're doing here on Makriza Mini Cook is that through the plate. What you see, Kamba Mabizulao is there. But on the lighter side, now um, let's go in terms of preparing or cooking. I might going to be uh, very basic. Kalang uh, was okay. And our soca and fage ama food alapana and then saying wa kanzing. I just like love them dry. Uh, then saying pea is chala samabele by the side. So just plain chala samabele with a matum. Yawaza my bafamata matisi and so bad. Hey, me na uko kong for this which I as well pay a bit try, try it. Okay, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, please let's discuss this in the comment section uh, on the utilization of indigenous languages, uh, of local languages within our food, naming our food as it is uh, from, from, from the ground, so that also we can present that in a natural way to, to the world. Um, tell me in the comment section, let's discuss uh, and tell me your view on, on this. So thank you for watching Prince Sivala Mashang here. Uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Remember, we saw me uh, this coming week. I'll catch you there. Uh, remember, keep the love, keep the wound. Togoza, Kamakule said. Peace. Thank you.